nothing to do with schools and that we can have whatever policy we want. So since there's no executive order that required the policy, there's no executive order that ends to stop the policy, I don't see that we have an emergency that requires this meeting. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your opinion. Um, we, which we're getting into kind of the substance of the meeting. Can, can we have a motion to approve the agenda? Mr. Watson, do you have a motion? We have a motion to approve the agenda. Okay, Mr. McMillan. So moved. Mr. McMillan first and Ms. Bounds seconds the motion. Um, any discussion? We've already had some discussion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we have two opposed, three opposed, five, four. You're opposed to Can we take a, vo a voice vote? Okay. No. Roll call vote. Ms. Owen? No. Mr. Watson? No. Ms. Babb? No. Ms. Henderson? Yes. Ms. Bounds? Yes. Mr. McMillan? Yes. Ms. Christie? No. Ms. Horn? Yes. Four yes votes and four no votes. Okay, so we have four yes votes and four no votes. Unfortunately, Ms. Satterfield couldn't be here today. Um, so do we have, would someone like to reconsider their vote? We have a four, four vote to approve the agenda. Mr. Dupler just to state the reason that that the law department asked that we have this meeting and um, and then we can if if someone would like to reconsider their vote we'll do that otherwise um, we'll move forward thank you sure. thank you madam chair uh, we felt that that the board uh, would be wise to have a meeting uh, because obviously uh, although we suspected that, that that there would be changes upcoming uh, at the end of this month uh, we didn't we didn't know for sure we don't like to uh, uh, project things and, and, and say things before they happen so uh, but earlier this week things did happen uh, the the governor uh, revised his executive orders uh, that that was kind of the first uh, uh, shoe to fall uh, April 27th which was Wednesday uh, he indicated that he was taking away local authority for face coverings and taking away the Tennessee pledge. He also issued guidance saying that that applied to all counties except for the six with local health departments. But even then, and this is probably the biggest reason why uh, the law department recommended some type of meeting of the board, is that uh, he is requesting that, that uh, mask requirements be lifted no later than the end of May. So with that, um, you know, we knew that there was additional uh, information out there and felt that the board needed to, to weigh that. Now, uh, it's also true that uh, the governor and uh, the director of the Tennessee Health Department um, and the mayor, uh, of, course, of course, that was the other thing that happened was the Knox County Mayor Glenn Jacobs released uh, masks for uh, businesses in Knox County as well. So, and that happened um, almost simultaneously. Uh, I think that was the 27th. Uh, hold on a minute, let me make sure I've got my, got my dates correct. I know the, the, the governor's order went into effect on the 28th, and then uh, Glenn Jacobs' order went into effect on the 27th. But everyone has said that the board is, is able to make its own decision. Uh, school boards are, so that's, that's certainly the case. School boards are still left to make their own decision as far as uh, masks within the schools. Uh, so, so ultimately, it's a policy decision. Uh, but our office is simply saying that um, you know the governor is looking at uh, asking for mask requirements to be lifted no later than the end of May. So that was that was the biggest reason uh, for the uh, for the ask that the board take this up. Okay. That was it.
Thank you, Mr. Dupler. Ms. Christie, was your light on first? Yeah, I just want to say um, my reason for not approving is um, the fact that Ms. Satterfield is not here. I would approve it otherwise, but she is the one who brought this policy. And um, I feel now that more than ever, we need to make sure that, um, you know, the first district has a voice at the table. And, you know, she's, it's not because she purposely chose not to be here. I think we all know that she had a scheduling conflict. But, you know, if you want to call it at a time when, when she can be here as well, I would vote differently on that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Watson. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, Mr. Dupler, just to clarify a couple things that you stated. You, you said two different, you um, referenced the governor's actions twice. The first time you said it, you said he's requiring by the end of May that mask mandates be lifted. And the second time you said he's asking for mask mandates to be lifted, which is two different statements. So can you clarify what the governor actually did in relationship to the end of May? It, me, as it relates to the school system. Let, yeah, yeah. I, well, I mean, and I was, and, and I apologize if I was unclear. I mean, I mean, I mean, there are, and there's a lot of, a lot of people that are unclear about about the executive order because it wasn't just an order that just came in and says, "Hey, we're just wiping away everything." It wasn't that clear. Uh, but what it did say was that uh, there 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 is no requirement for face coverings in the 89 of the 95 counties. Uh, of course, Knox is is excluded. They're one of the, or we're one of the six. So. Uh, so, so his executive order doesn't directly apply to Knox County. But then Ma Mayor Jacobs uh, made his order apply directly to Knox County. However, neither one of those uh, applies directly to the school systems. I mean, that's been, that's been clear throughout the, uh, the orders and the language is that, you know, the school systems are left for the school boards to make their own decision because school boards have control over, the, uh, over their respective school systems. So, but, it also said, but the mayor's also put out language saying that, that he's requesting, um, and he's not requiring, but he is requesting uh, that, that mask requirements be lifted no later than the end of May. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, we're not saying the school system has to do that, but what, but what we're saying is under that guidance, you know, the recommendation would be toward so, the end of May. I appreciate that. So, at our last meeting, and several people referenced this in emails that they sent to me, um, is that we had a conversation. It was a very specific conversation. I think Ms. Christie brought it up first, um, and then I engaged in a conversation with you, Mr. Dupler, about where our authority comes in order to even require a mass mandate. And at that time, I believe what you said is um, because there's the current state of emergency that gives us that authority, the state of emergency has not been lifted, correct? Again, that's that's where things get confusing. I'll I'll read out of out of Governor's Executive Order 80, which is the one that was yeah. handed down April 27th. What it says is, I, and then Bill Lee, et etc. Cetera, et cetera, do hereby declare a continuing limited state of emergency. Okay. So under that, I mean, so there is a continuing you know, limited state of emergency. Yeah, okay, that's why our so, office says that. So, my, yeah, so the, the reason I'm voting, voted no for this agenda is because this agenda is re-deliberating a topic that we have now met about eight times, nine hours of discussions, and 55 public forum speakers. We literally made a decision about this two weeks ago, and we all were in agreement that if the governor did something that lifted that state of emergency, then we would secede to that. So to me, the only agenda item to be discussed is, do we still have the authority to re-litigate what we want to do or not do, to me, is not honoring the will of the board. The will of the board, two weeks ago, made a decision, and I know it was a 5-4 decision. I know it wasn't a majority decision. If we, I, I can, if there's a substitute motion that changes the agenda to say, let's have a discussion about the uh, authority of the board to implement what it's already agreed to, then I can vote for that agenda. I can't vote for an agenda that relitigates something we've litigated for nine hours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Ms. Spab? Yes, I'd kind of like to address this also. Um, and several other people have done it, and I'm going to refer back to what Mr. Dupler has talked about. The emergency, I mean, or what the governor came out with 
the other day was talking about the end of May. That is not what is on our agenda to pass today. It is to pass something that becomes immediately effective. And we all got a recommendation last night from the superintendent, which actually much more goes along with what the governor recommended. <laughs> and it was to let end, go through the end of May, which would get us through the school year, which is what we committed to our students and to our teachers. And I really have a problem with thinking when that was the thing the governor came out with, there was a need for an emergency meeting today. When we're meeting next Wednesday, regularly scheduled, and that would have us time to deal with what the governor came out with. I see no reason that this was an emergency today. Um, there are some things going on in our school system that I do think are emergencies, and this is not one of them. As Mr. Watson has talked about, we just talked about this two weeks ago, and we are having a meeting next Wednesday. And I think at the Wednesday meeting, it could come up and talk about actually dealing with the governor asked for, which is sunsetting it at the end of the month. So for that reason, I can't agree with this agenda. Thank you, Ms. Fab. Uh, I think Ms. Owen was next, and then Ms. Pounds. Ms. Owen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just following up on what Mr. Watson said, in addition to re-deliberating, it's not just that we have made this decision and that we made it two weeks ago. We additionally voted not to have a second reading. Additionally voted not to have a second reading. So we additionally voted that we were going to suspend policy and say that we weren't gonna talk about it again. Yet here we are. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Ms. Bounds. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I won't be supporting this whether we deal with it today or we deal with it next week. Um, if the board recalls, two weeks ago, I made a friendly amendment to my friendly amendment and we wouldn't be here today uh, if those five votes would have accepted and approved the friendly amendment that was made two weeks ago because it would have aligned with the governor's ask, if you want to call it that, that all mask mandates end at the end of May. But here we are today because this board wasn't satisfied with a May, at that time, a May end date. They wanted to extend it on end through the entire summer so that every one of those children in summer school were masked. So I won't support this either way. So I just find it very frustrating that that amendment was made. It was voted down by four, and here we are. Thank you, Ms. Pounds. Mr. McMillan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a, a brief comment uh, in regard to uh, Ms. Owen's comments that it was not a legal meeting. Uh, I believe, I disagree with that. I believe that the 48 hour notice would apply here. Uh, also, uh, I believe uh, that anybody in, that lives in Knox County or works in Knox County that is impacted by this is aware uh, from that standpoint. She talked about some people in the media not knowing. Well, some board members have done everything they can on media to stir it up, for lack of a better term, and make sure everybody was aware. So I don't think there's, I don't think there's any question but what any reasonable person that is impacted by uh, knows something about it at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Ms. Owen. To cl clarify that, I'm not saying that people don't know. I'm saying that a 48-hour notice, when our teachers require 72 hours notice to take leave so that they could be here to address us, that is not adequate in that situation. I agree, our policy says 48 hours, and I agree that that normally would work. And if we were having this meeting at a reasonable time of day, when people who are working and kids who are in school could actually come and talk to us, 
then that would be reasonable. But when we're having this in the middle of the day, while literally everyone impacted it is in class, that's not reasonable. Thank Can you. I respond? Certainly. Uh, with all due respect, uh, Ms. Owens, uh, do you believe that if we had it, let's say for argument's sake, at five o'clock on Wednesday afternoon, next Wednesday, do you think that this, uh, since you're so interested in, in uh, teachers being represented, do you think the hall would be packed with teachers? I believe that any teacher who wanted to be here and any student who wanted to be here could be. That wasn't Whether what I asked. Whether they choose to be, I, I can't say. Well, you but it, answer what I asked. I have no way to answer that. You the, don't have any way question, of answering? The question isn't whether they would do it. The question is whether we give them the opportunity to do it. Okay, thank you. The, the reason the meeting was scheduled now is, is really because um, when we polled board members, uh, board members were able to be here. Ms. Evity had until, I mean, Ms. Satterfield had, in, had until, I think, 1030 that she could be here. Once we saw that we had so much public forum, there was no way that she could extend her time past that. And so that's the reason for her absence. When we scheduled the meeting, it was understood that she could be here yep. at least until 1030. And so, um, so whether we could have gotten the whole meeting in in that time frame is, is unknown. However, um, the when the law department asked that we add this meeting, um, I didn't think that if we put it out to, you know, for a Thursday evening that we would have, you know, better attendance anyway. So uh, it is certainly during the workday, uh, but it's, it's up to this board to carry out the business of this board. And um, so we, we tried to schedule it when board members were available. I think we had Mr. Watson and then Ms. Bounds. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Bounds, I appreciate you bringing up some of the discussion that we had um, two weeks ago. And I do remember you making that recommendation, and I also thought there was some wisdom in that recommendation. I will also remind the board that the discussion we had prior to the mask policy was related to superintendent's recommendations for guidelines for this coming school year. And the reason that I did not go with May at that time is because we had just agreed to follow his recommendations, which is Tennessee Department of Health guidelines, which at that point recommended um, masking in schools, which would have been in effect in August. And so by choosing a date of May, last or two weeks ago, we would in effect said, we're gonna sunset a mass policy and then for two months of summer school, we have no guidance. And then at the start of August, we would then have guidance again to read masks. That was not something that I felt like was something we should do to our students and our teachers and to our parents to have that back and forth. And I think Mr. Ms. Owens' uh, point is valid, but also we did hear through a, from a lot of people from the public just in two days, this is not counting any prior emails that I received, and you all have a copy of this chart at your desk. Um, just in two days, we, I received 346 emails and voicemails, which is way more than any other time we've had this discussion. Um, and I categorized them by parents, doctors, nurses, teachers, students, and principals. So out of parents, we had 257 emails 67% of them, 171, said, why are we talking about this again? Please don't change this at the end of the school year. Doctors, we only had four total, but 75% of them said, please don't change this right now. Nurses, we only had five total. Three of them said, please don't change this right now. Teachers, we had 65 total. 91% of them said, why are we changing this right now, potentially? Students, only 11 responded, but all 100% of them said, please don't change this right now. Principals, four of them reached out and said, why, in four total, 100% said, why are we considering changing this right now? I know Superintendent Thomas also did a survey of all principals. Mr. Thomas, do you have those numbers? 74% of principals uh, wish to keep the the uh, face mask policy like it is until the end of school. Okay, so total, out of those 346 respondents, 73% said, please don't change this right now. 
I don't think that this is a decision that we need to be making simply by public opinion. But if that is your view, that this is a public opinion decision, obviously the public opinion is, why are we talking about this again right now? Um, and also, in fairness, we know that we have over 60,000 students in this system, so a 346 sample is not representative. But of the people who chose to elevate their voice, it was a clear majority that said, please don't change this right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Rounds. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to make a couple of points. First, to Jennifer's comments about the uh, collaborative conferencing and 72 hours notice to teachers. Being an educator, I understand that that is what is required of teachers. I also understand that having taught in this system for 23 years, if I had wanted to be off today, um, chances are my principal would have granted me a personal leave day or I could have just called in sick. So uh, that might have gotten me in trouble, but I do know that <laughs> while 72 hours is the go, that is not always what is practiced. And thank, and thank you, uh, Mr. Watson, for your point that I did make that friendly amendment that it would end at the end of May, and I understand what you're saying. Um, but I do want to say that um, if the public believes the mass poly policy is effective, they've either not been in the schools, which has been limited this year, or they're unaware of what is going on. Uh, this math policy is not protecting their children. I talked to one of my principals the other day. He said, and we all know that in middle and high school, it is very difficult the springtime of the year. And you can imagine with Governor Lee's order and the mayor, whom everybody highly respects as Kane, uh, come out with the no mass policy, um, the principal said, you know, the kid's walking down the hall. And I tell him to put his mask up because that's what I do all day is police the kids and tell them to raise their mask over their nose. And he looks at me and he says, the governor says I don't have to. And the mayor says I don't have to. So <laughs> what right do you think? Ma Madam Chair, Madam Chair, a, a point of order. We are May Sir, excuse me. Mr. Watson. Our discussion as a board right now is moving into deliberating this agenda, which that's not what I've been doing. I've been deliberating whether or not this agenda is valid. Um, we have a vote that is 4-4 that says we're not meeting today. From my understanding, if it's a 4-4 vote, then the agenda fails. I'm fine with us continuing discussion whether or not we want to bring back an agenda. I do not want to deliberate masking when that is the agenda item that mm -hmm. just got voted down. Yes, I, I okay. agree, Mr. Okay. Watson. Well, well taken, Mr. Watson. Okay. Do we, we have several lights on. Um, do we have other comments regarding the agenda? <coughs> Ms. Oh, Bounds, are you, your comments oh, are sorry. complete? No, that's fine. I, I don't know if Mr. McMillan had his light on or Ms. Owen. Mr. McMillan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a comment in reference to uh, what Ms. Owen said about uh, teachers have being required to, to wait three days. I suppose that it's still uh, exists. There is such thing as emergency leave and most principals uh, I've found will grant it if you have to have emergency leave uh, for the next day or even if you call and explain the situation that morning they will grant it on the spot if, if they you know, deeming it an emergency. So that that's contrary to what she said. Thank you. Thank, Mr. You. Thank you, Mr. Millen. Ms. Owen. If someone from the executive team could help me out with this. Um, since we are testing right now, is personal leave even allowed? And do we know how many schools are testing today? So during this testing time, during these weeks, is personal leave allowed? Mr. Bolton or Mr. Ryswick, 
Dr. Reiswick. I can, I can, thank you, Madam Chair. I can probably address the testing issue and then Mr. Bolton may have to on the, on the leave. Um, so the, the window is open for testing and schools have flexibility to set uh, their testing window how they want to. I do know, I don't know everyone's schedule um, sitting here today, but I do know uh, that some, if it's, if it's not a full testing, that some schools do use this as like makeup days to make up for portions of tests. So um, I would feel reasonably confident to say that there is some testing going on in the district, but I can't tell you specifically which schools. Thank you, Dr. Isaac. Mr. Bolton. Thanks, Madam Chair, board members. Uh, in regards to personal leave, it is at the discretion of the principal to approve a personal day, which is different. There are some parameters around the personal day. There can't be um, a certain number of employees out of the building at one time. It gives discretion to the principal to make that approval. Um, but as far as the testing, I'm not for sure about that. Thank you, Mr. Bolton. Okay. All right. If we if we do not have any a substitute motion for the agenda at this time, okay, then uh, yeah, our meeting is concluded. Then. Oh.